before the video starts, I just want to say, if you guys are interested, uh, do me a favor and go check out my website, hvacrvideos.com. Uh, merch available on there. Uh, it helps to support the channel. Um, we got hoodies, uh, shirts, uh, a couple different designs, hats, beanies. So please uh, go check out the website, hvacrvideos.com. There we go. Whoa, dust blowing out of my face. <laughs> Good gosh. That thing's been off for a while. Whew. Damn. All right, well, condensed fan motors work, so that's a plus. Now we need to see if the compressor works. This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. All right, we're headed to a service call right now. It's uh, Saturday about 4.08 p.m. in the afternoon or evening, whatever you want to call it. I got a call from a customer, one of the restaurants I service, and they said their walk-in freezer's not working. Apparently, um, it's been high in temp since this morning, up and down or something like that. So I asked her if it was iced up. She couldn't really tell me. So. We will see what happens. Um, this is, uh, you know, just thinking about these jobs before, this is uh, a really old Omnitemp refrigeration rack that's really beat up. I believe there's only two compressors still running in this rack. Everything else has been removed. Uh, this system is a walk-in freezer. It's a R502 system. So I went ahead and swung by the shop real quick because I happen to have about three quarters of a drum of 502 and just threw it in the van just in case. I don't really want to have to be doing any big conversions tonight or anything. And to be honest with you, that refrigerant isn't doing me any good sitting in the shop, so if I can get a use out of it, I'll go ahead and use it if I can. So yeah, we're gonna get on with it and uh, let's see what happens when we get there. Let's open this guy up and see what's going on here. So evaporator fan motors are running. It's cool. It's not super cold in here. Doesn't look to be any ice on the back of the coil, but the coil is just bashed. Look at that. It is beat down. Um, suction line, look at this liquid line. It's beat to crap. Looks like it. Um, <laughs> I wonder if <laughs> this thing is hanging down like this. I wonder if someone yanked on the liquid line and broke it in the attic completely. That's kind of crazy. So like I said, this is a really old Omnitemp rack. Um, condenser fan motors are running. So uh, walk-in freezers on this side right here. Open it up. This is my sight glass. It's beat down, it needs to be changed. Look at that, that's like an OEM filter dryer or it's really old. That's crazy. Okay. And uh, compressor's red hot and it's not running. That's not a good sign. Taking a look inside this old electrical panel. Breakers don't seem tripped. Now, come to think of it though, I don't know if this motor's running because it's not moving air. It's almost like it's running backwards because it's being sucked by that one. Um, yeah, that's not good. That's the walk-in freezer contactor and I believe it's pulled in. We need to get in there and check voltage. All right, well, on one phase, I got 211. On another phase, I have 212. And on the last phase, I have 211. So I have three phase power coming to this compressor. And like I said, it's really hot. We're gonna turn it off, check to see if we have continuity between the windings, cool it off, maybe get it to stop. Maybe it's off on thermal overload. Could have something to do with that fan cycle control. I mean, uh, that fan not working, I don't know. Okay, I have the compressor turned off and I'm set to continuity and we don't have any continuity across those windings. Let's check all three. Nothing on that one. And then what about the last one to the last one? So we have completely open line, or OL, on uh, all three legs. So let's hope that the compressor is off on thermal overload. So we're gonna go ahead and grab a water hose and try to cool this guy off real quick. I went ahead and shut down the whole rack. And yeah, this motor was spinning the wrong way, but it could be that it's bad. It could be that it has a bad cap. Who knows? Um, we'll have to look into that. Uh, for this right here, what I'm gonna do 
I'm gonna get a water hose attachment, the cool presser tool, but I want power shut off to the rack while I'm doing it. This thing's so old that I wouldn't be surprised if there's shorts and stuff in here, so. I mean, uh, spots where it could potentially short, I should say. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can get my meter clamped onto those three terminals so that way I can monitor when it resets. If you haven't seen it already, this is a little tool that I found actually on Instagram. Um, about, I don't know, a while back, and then they actually got picked up by Subco, and Subco distributes it. I think they bought the rights to it or something like that, but it's called the Cool Presser. You can pick them up in most supply houses now, but essentially it's got a big magnet, and it allows the water to run over the compressor head. It's pretty cool. Helps to cool the compressor off, and you can just let your hose go. So we're gonna come up here, get a meter on the load side of that contactor so we know when the thermal overload across our fingers actually resets. So we're gonna let it run. I got my meter set to a uh, tone, so it'll give me an audible tone, theoretically, when it resets. But it's kinda hard to get it in there too, so hopefully it actually grabs on there. But we'll let it run for a little while, see what happens. There's times that these universal hubs really come in handy. So if you don't know, this one has three screws. They're machine screws. And uh, the hub stays on, you can pull it off. So that makes it nice to be able to get in here. So, huh, look right here. There's a big old hole in that conduit right there. And the wire's got a big old hole in it too. Okay, well that's not good. But where does that wire even go to? It's not going to the motor, it's going into that box. Hmm, interesting. The motor's not hot at all. It's actually cold. Let's open this up. Maybe the capacitors are in there. And this thing just reset. So we're gonna let it keep cooling for a little while because sometimes the compressors can reset and then overheat again right, right quick, I should say. I'm stumbling over my words. So we're gonna let it run with the water on it for a minute while we investigate this a little bit more. So it's interesting because uh, the manager just came up here kind of freaking out because he's got water pouring downstairs. This happens a lot, especially on these old racks. Um, so they're like, is the water coming downstairs have something to do with you? And I said, yes, but you got a roof leak somewhere. Because I'm just, you know, I wasn't even like going crazy just getting the top of the compressor wet. And somehow it's leaking into the building. He says it's quite a bit, so who knows? Could be over here, could be over here, anywhere. Cause all this water that I just did right now is just pooling somewhere. So this place is a mess right now, but yeah. Stuff happens. I'd be polite about it, but just tell them, you know, it'll it'll stop when it dries up because there's not much I can do about it. So, all right, so compressor has been reset for a while. I'm just still trying to dig into this wiring. There's a couple different spots where we have some burnt stuff going on. There's one right there. I'm trying to make logic of this. Like, what is this wire? This looks to be some sort of a common. If you trace it back, it's going right there. That was interesting. This thing's a mess. These old racks can be a mess. So this here and here is 208 single phase for the motors. And as best as I can tell, it's one single source running back, but I don't know. We'll see. I'm gonna try to clean this up first and see if I can repair the electrical shorts and then uh, test the capacitors and then we'll put it back together and hopefully that compressor will restart. Let's hope, cross our fingers because I would love to change this system, but I don't want to change it on a Saturday night. I would rather, because I'm not going to get condensing units and evaporators tonight, so I'd have to do an emergency compressor replacement, which would suck. Um, I'd rather put in a whole new condensing unit, you know? Man, so from the looks of it, this is a common for one of the motors, because this blue wire, which is only going to the yellow wire for that motor, and we gotta have two sources of power here. So that would explain why this motor's not running because if the wire's completely broken, but look at how that wire's ran, just running through there. What the fudge is that about? And then it blew a hole in that, which has the main power for the other motor. So of course I gotta fix it all. And I'm supposed to be on the HVAC overtime show right now because uh, we rescheduled for the day after Christmas. Fun stuff, right? All right, so I rewired in here. Um, I went ahead and went with some SO 
whatever cord. Uh, it's not perfect, but like I said, this thing's gonna get replaced soon, but it's going into here. We have a proper connector. Um, and then I need to wire this in over here where the wiring was at. So a little bit at a time, it's getting dark. Um, and I'm currently live with my friends right now, so. Okay, so I tied in uh, the fan motor, put the guard on it temporarily. The, it's a mess in here, but I tied into the power. Uh, we need to turn on the rack to see if the condenser fan motor turns on. Um, and then after that, we'll turn on the compressor. Let's go ahead and pull this over here. Stand back and don't blow up. And I'm pretty sure we lost a neutral because nothing happened when I turned on the power. All right, so at the, the wires for the condenser fan motor, there's actually no power. So we need to trace that back and see where that's getting energized from. Um, oh, you know what? There's two fuses right there. I wonder if it's those. Okay, so to, to get me going, again, we're gonna have to come back and figure out the fuse situation. I don't have the patience to do it tonight. Um, I tied into the, the main contactor right here. So again, don't blow up in my face. There we go. Whoa, dust blowing out of my face. <laughs> Good gosh. That thing's been off for a while. Whew. Damn. All right, well, condensed fan motors work, so that's a plus. Now we need to see if the compressor works. All right, guys, here's the moment of truth. Is this compressor gonna restart? Yes. I'm standing in a puddle of water, that sounds safe. It's running, but we have a problem. My head pressure and my suction pressure are almost identical. That's, I'm using smart probes. That's, nope, that's problematic not going to be a fun night. It doesn't add up though. I wonder if my probes are messed up because it's compressors. Discharge line feels cold, so <laughs> no. Well, yeah, this sucks, man. Bad compressor and they have to have it replaced tonight. Uh, it went off on thermal overload again. I did find, which was interesting, is up on the top, there is the discharge line coming out and there's a service valve up there. And that service valve was like halfway closed, so that probably contributed, and that's the discharge line valve, so it was restricting the discharge pressure. Um, but it wasn't closed completely, so gas was still getting through. But yeah, this thing, it still has gas in it, but it's got a bad compressor, so this sucks. So I gotta try to figure out what I'm gonna do and where I'm gonna get a compressor from right now. So we're gonna have to convert it to uh, more than likely over to 404 tonight, and then we'll have to do some you know, stuff later or whatever, it sucks. So I was able to convince the customer to get a freezer truck, um, which gave me a little bit more time to be able to uh, handle this complete equipment change out that they approved. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on that. And uh, the job is actually gonna be mainly done tomorrow, but today we're gonna be doing a little bit of busy work just to make tomorrow go smoother. So. All right, so they emptied out the box. They've just got a couple cooled items, but basically this is just open to their walk-in cooler at the moment. So we're gonna be removing this evaporator today, recovering all the gas, disconnecting, getting ready for tomorrow when the equipment will arrive. We'll have a crane to get the equipment on the roof and all that good stuff. So just a little bit at a time. Sometimes we get lucky with these ones and when they get a freezer truck, it makes it go a little bit smoother. All right. Um, my penetration is going to be somewhere in this area right here and we're just going to run the lines it's not the greatest looking attic but we're going to run the lines over here all the way down over to there is my walk-in freezer this motor uh, was making noise again so i shut it off while i'm up here i was originally going to put the unit right here but i started thinking about it and instead of running it on this right here i think i'm going to put the unit right here the penetration is going to come out literally right here right in this area and if I put the unit over here, that's a lot less of a line set run. A lot less of an, well, the electrical run will have to come over there, but that's fine, that's not a problem. So the penetration will happen right in line with this on the other side of here, right there. And then I need to decide whether or not I'm gonna put the unit here or over here. Here, if I put it here, I could do that, but it just kind of puts it kind of close to the AC, discharge air going into there. So no, I think we'll put it over here. 
right in this area right here. We'll get some four by fours down. Yeah, it'll look nice. One thing leads to another. So I got the penetration drilled, moved it over there and went to go turn this condenser fan motor back on and it's just like leading to a nightmare. So this thing, the screw, one of the screws had fallen out. I don't know why. So I went ahead and just grabbed a new hub, put it on, started it up and only one motor started up. But when I got here, both were running, but capacitors blown apart for the far one from the rain pain in the butt so I'm getting the capacitors I got two new capacitors and I went ahead and took that wire that I temporarily put hot and ran it to a disconnect right here that's not being used anymore and we'll put some fuses in that so these condenser fan motors will now be fused literally when we're done with this today there's only gonna be one compressor still running in this rack so this is literally for a tiny little bar reaching good grief I ended up having to change the motor the far motor anyways okay so this whole rack is collapsing. So I don't know if you guys saw, but there was like some weird piece of metal. That thing right there was holding up the bracket. So I ended up doing washers all the way across. Again, this whole thing is trash, but I did washers to space it out because the middle right there is collapsing, causing the blades to hit and everything. So we took care of that. I'm just cleaning up my messes and now I can get back onto the walk-in replacement. So I have another person with me that's been demoing downstairs, taking down the coil and stuff. Um, I don't have the equipment with me today, but we're gonna try to push down the line set and uh, Get started on that now. My idea is the line sets gonna come up 90 90 over and go This way and then we'll probably make a bend and go that way when we set the condensing unit down We'll know where we need to bend it to go into the The unit all right, we got the general idea of what we're piping. We kind of got it set up a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and braze it the nitrogen flowing through we'll do the suction line first it's open downstairs and then we'll do the liquid line so
nothing about this is ideal. This whole roof is just a giant cluster because we're trying to pull everything from that rack and trying to, you know, deal with it. And I had originally thought about putting the unit over here, but it just seemed like it was gonna, it would, I would love it to be further out from everything, but it was just gonna be more of a pain, um, electrical and everything, so. Plus there's a big soft spot in the roof over there and just, it's a pain. So I decided to go here. Now the downside to going here is this is a low spot in the roof. You can see where the water puddles. Uh, that's why I went with the Dura blocks. Um, I didn't want to go with wood because I thought the wood would rot away really quick. I made sure that my penetrations weren't in the low spot. Um, it's not ideal, you know. I'd love for there to be more room in between the line set and the unit so you could work on it. But again, you know, it's not perfect. Uh, we could put a cinder block and sit on it if we need to. Once you pull the top off the unit, it'll be a lot easier to work. So again, you know, we have to deal with what we have. So this right here is my uh, electrical for the communication, or basically the coil power. Um, we've got a temporary conduit right here that we're gonna run temporary power to the rack with. I already got it in there. We'll just have to strap it down temporarily. Uh, the customer already knows that an electrician has to come after the fact. The rack's breaker is big enough to support this condensing unit, and most of the stuff, well actually there's only one other condensing unit, two other condensing units pulled off the rack, but there's several compressors that have been disconnected in the rack. So we have plenty of available power within the, the, the breaker size for the rack to temporarily run the condensing unit. And then like I said, the electrician will have to come in and I want him to run a dedicated power source to this condensing unit. Eventually, we, when we pull the last compressor out of that rack, I'd like to talk the customer into letting me lift that rack off the roof because it's done, essentially. Uh, but that's a whole nother day's problem. So that's why I'm really pushing them to get independent power source for this condensed unit. So uh, we've got a lot of it pre-piped from yesterday. We're just gonna um, start installing, hanging the coil and all that good stuff. Just kind of getting ready for brazing. You know, this isn't perfect, but it works. We'll clean it up a little bit. We made some offsets. Again, we'll, we'll straighten it all out once we get everything put together and you know we'll get it clamped and everything and it'll straighten the lines out so we're getting ready to braze it right now moving along we got the brazing all done downstairs I'm actually just doing a pressure test with some nitrogen right now so I've got a solenoid magnet downstairs opening the solenoid valve we're pressurizing on the high side and it's coming back on the low side so that's what we want it to do we're gonna let it uh build up pressure and then make sure we got no leaks all right I'm attempting to go with a one hose setup let's see if this pulls down fast enough it's doing pretty good right now we're in 7,000 microns. I've got the gas ballast open, so. I've been really having a hard time with the uh, vacuum core or Schrader core removal tools all leaking. Doesn't matter what brand. All brand new, too. It's starting to piss me off, so. Um, this time I went without a Schrader core removal tool, so I'm pulling from the king valve on the receiver and just have my vacuum gauge on the low side. So let's see if that does us. Uh, we're just gonna do some pickup work, start taping up where the insulation's meeting, that kind of stuff put the fuses in we're all wired electrically we've got temporary power this seal type back here is temporary uh, and then when the electrician comes in he can run permanent power into the disconnect switch this right here is permanent that's my uh, evaporator coil voltage going into here so I gotta say man I'm really liking these Russell units they're very well put together so far so very very nice all right we're getting ready to turn this guy on and i just came down and put the solenoid coil on i really dig how these guys use quality components all spoiling stuff the vaps looking pretty good um we just got to still we, we taped up those holes but we got to foam them so everything's nice and good going up so yeah drain line heaters here so we're just kind of getting ready to start it up right now. I've already got five pounds of gas in the system. We're gonna open up the receiver and uh, hope that everything else works and nothing blows up. All right, it is running. We're gonna add some gas. Sight glass is empty. Uh, the compressor was going in the wrong direction. It's weird though, because I checked phase rotation before at the disconnect switch, so they just didn't have it wired correctly at the compressor. But anyways, I switched the rotation. Sounds a lot better. Take this up micron gauge off here and uh, yeah we're just gonna charge it up now uh, this unit max charge is 14 pounds so we'll look and see I don't know if they they should have put a tag saying how much to add for the winter charge but we'll see all right we are charging the system up right now and I just pumped down the receiver to check the liquid level and we're right at about 
three quarters, 80% of the liquid level. So we're gonna go ahead and mark that for the next guy so that way he knows where the liquid level's at. It's about, I don't know, 10 degrees in here right now. So I went ahead and threw it into defrost. Um, and uh, we're just testing all the heaters to make sure that they all work correctly. Just wanna see current draw on every heater. Yeah, and this is the last one right here. Yeah, so all the defrost heaters are working. Um, there's quite a bit of steam going on. It seems like it's a little warm in here, but all right. So we know we're good in defrost. So we have the uh, drain pan heat or drain line heater hooked up to uh, four and N because there's no sense in the drain line heater running when it's in defrost. So yeah, we're looking good. Um, I'm gonna uh, button this up in here, turn it back on. Went ahead and secured these guys some clamps again we got some spray foam coming out we'll clean that up in a minute but it's currently at uh, 20 degrees right now so it's coming down when I do these what I start with is just trace them with uh, a marker and then I'm gonna put the the mastic you know an inch in so that way when you push it down it smushes out also we're gonna put the mastic all around the hole down there to create a barrier and then we'll put some up here too so sometimes they turn out pretty sometimes they look like a pile of crap but it won't leak. Um, I always tell them to get the roofer out anyways because I'm not a roofer. You know, I'm not going to guarantee no leaks. But we make sure that we put it underneath. That seeps out. We put screws in it. It's not going nowhere. Um, we've got a couple little things left to do, but I'm I'm not really going to worry about it tonight. Is I got to get some clamps to put screws into those. So my box is, well it was at 10 degrees, but now it's at 12. I'm gonna try to dial in the superheat a little bit because uh, our superheat's extremely high. So we're gonna put a couple cranks on that valve and uh, we don't wanna go crazy because we still quite aren't a set point, but we're getting pretty darn close. Okay, walk-in freezers are always fun, but we wanna bring the superheat down, so we wanna bring the stem out of the valve, okay? Six quarter turns. We're gonna see what that does for us. Okay, the superheat's slowly dropping. We want about six to eight degrees on this guy, so we're looking pretty good. Superheat is looking good. We're gonna go ahead and let the system run. Um, let them go ahead and load up the box. I'll probably come out tomorrow morning just to follow up on it. But uh, yeah, we're done with this one now. Kind of funny. They uh, told them to get a freezer truck. It's not a freezer truck. I don't know if they can get a freezer truck or not, but they have bags of ice on everything to keep it cold. This thing's only maintaining like 33 degrees. Oh well, not my problem. All right, we don't always luck out that way, but here's how I got them to hold off and let me do a system replacement. Basically, bottom line, they knew that the equipment needed to be replaced, okay? But it was just a matter of, do they need me to change the compressor that night or not? So what I did was it was already late in the evening by the time I left and the box temperature by the time I got there was like 37 degrees. Okay. So it was already, but the same temperature as the walk-in cooler, their product inside the freezer was already ruined or at least thawed out. Okay. So, um, when it came to changing the compressor that night, I said, look, there's really no point. Like at least let me wait until Sunday morning, you know? And then I got a hold of the facilities department uh, they said, okay, they'll wait until Sunday morning. I just opened the cooler door because it was the same temp as the freezer. And then uh, Sunday morning, I sat down and gave them a quote. I, I, I sat down at my computer, wrote up a quote to change the compressor. And uh, it was going to be stupid expensive. And I told them, I said, and I got a hold of facilities and I just said, look, this is ridiculously expensive. I really don't want you guys to put this money into there. I think it was going to be like almost $6,000 or something. Cause it was like overtime and getting the compressor it was a pain in the butt. So I was like, really, you guys, if we change this compressor, I guarantee you, we're going to have to change all this equipment within the next couple months. Like it, it just seems like a waste of your guys's money. But I said, I will do anything you guys want me to do. If you want me to change the compressor today on Sunday, I will gladly do it. But I said, I'm giving you my gut, you know, uh, opinion like please don't do this you know and they agreed with me they said you know what no don't don't change it and they, they before i even give them a price they said let's just change out all the equipment get it on an emergency rush order just do it and uh i have learned uh, especially this last year no more verbal approvals um, i'm done with verbal approvals they always bite me in the butt so i went ahead and uh, monday morning i sat down at my computer because their facilities director called me again because they ended up getting that freezer truck and then Monday morning, they said, uh, 
they're calling me. Okay, so what's the plan? And I just said, I'm going to get you guys a quote right now. I sat down at my computer, started, I went ahead and ordered the equipment because they told me to go ahead. Um, and uh, I did, I, I should say, first I did a load calculation on the box. And then I went ahead and ordered the equipment. Um, and then I sat down and gave them a quote for the whole replacement. Okay. And then they immediately approved the quote and we ordered everything. So um, today is Wednesday night. Uh, December 30th. Yeah, December 30th. And the first call happened on Saturday, December 26th. So I got it done in a couple days, got everything. I could have technically done it uh, Tuesday, yesterday, um, but it just seemed like a bit of a rush. So uh, yeah, anyways, we lucked out. Okay. Um, so, you know, trying to be prepared for these jobs, uh, as far as, you know, when I first started the first service call, you know, I was thinking about the job. Okay. This is a 502 system. It's an old rack. I went and grabbed that drama 502. I just like to be prepared because there's been too many times where I'm on call or it's late at night and, Oh, I don't have any refrigerant, you know, and I don't carry any of those, uh, replacement refrigerants anymore for R12 or R502. I used to carry them in my truck because we used to use them all the time, but it's so minuscule how many, 502 systems and 12 systems I have out there. It's, you know, there's probably like three or two of them left or whatever. So I don't carry any of the drop in replacements, R409A, 408A, MP39. I don't carry any of that stuff anymore. I have it in the shop um, and I'd really like to get rid of it. I was kind of bummed out I couldn't get rid of that 502. Um, I'm not even looking to make a million dollars off of it. If I could just, you know, get something for it because it's literally just disintegrate. I mean, it's not going to disintegrate, but it's just wasting, you know, being, it's very wasteful to have it just sitting in my shop, I guess I should say. So anyways, I'm tripping all over my words on this one, but, um, so just try to be prepared. Uh, you know, I walk into these, it's a bummer. You know, I, I was scheduled to be on a, a live stream the, the, the night of the service call I ended up doing a little bit of a live stream with my buddies. You know, but life happens when you're on call. You just got to, it's, I've been doing it for so long that I just realized like, you know, you just got to calm down, dude. You know, it's, it's a service call. The way that I look at it is, is in these crazy times right now, this 2020 year, I'm so thankful that I have these service calls. I mean, you know, I'm very grateful for that. Um, I'm very grateful for my petty problems, my first world problems, because there's so many other people that are less fortunate and I'm. I'm not thankful that I'm more fortunate, but I'm thankful for the fact that, um, you know, I'm healthy and, uh, you know, we have work, um, you know, I'm grateful, I guess I should say that's, that's the right way to say it. So, um, I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos, please. Like I said, in the beginning of the video, if you guys are interested, check out my website, hvacrvideos.com, uh, merch available on there. It really does help to support the channel. So. Um, I definitely ordered, uh, I, I think I got a little, um, excited when I ordered this last merch order, um, which is fine. I mean, I'll have it forever, but I have so many sweatshirts and so many t-shirts. It's ridiculous. You should see my office. It's just like these, these yellow boxes that you see back behind me at my office for work. <laughs> it's stacked up in my office. It's kind of funny, but anyways, thank you guys so very much. And, uh, please uh, check us out on the HVAC Overtime Show. We typically do Friday evenings. Um, I don't know if we're going to be doing a New Year's show or not. We're kind of going back and forth. I think we might do it, but anyways, you guys will see more announcements. And then uh, remember, I do live streams on Monday evening, uh, 5 p.m. Pacific on my YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already, and we will catch you guys on the next one.